Welcome, welcome. Well, ow, I have been attacked. Ow, it's got the claws in me. You never know what's going to happen on the War Game Channel. Well, that hurt extremely. She hopped up and dug into the flesh and hung there, and I'm wide awake now. Oh, yes, I was here doing a video on the War Gaming Channel. I don't know if this is going to be a video or a blooper, but we're going to go with it for a little while. Ah, well, I'm sitting here with my other hand trying to stem the bleeding. And Richello is attacking Cybertron, by the way. Yes, my uh, last Fleet Risk game, I decided to try a new developmental rule. And it was just a bot, so that's why there's been no content. I have been playtesting a rule set that is just absolutely, positively crap. So I'm scrapping it all and not even going to tell you about it. Other than the fact it was a progressive entry, you know, a roll for a side to entry on Fleet Risk, and it was bad. So I needed a mental break. So I have extra set up my Fleet Risk board to not be a Fleet Risk board. This is a representation of Cybertron. Yes, it is. So I decided to play a simple Autobots versus Decepticons. I decided to make a fun little optional rule to where you're not really playing Fleet Risk per se, but you are recreating your own Cybertron on the board however you want. Now, I have created 25 strategic points. Now, the purpose of this is for me to play test it and try to find what bonuses to give and little interesting things to do. So far I'm starting on one and down here you'll see a little pretty figure there and crystalline and that's going to be my version of a key for Vector Sigma that's going to give unit bonuses. So my last playtesting told me that we are always going to probably start with 20 units. And I decided to make a leader unit for this because as you know in Autobots and Decepticons leaders are important so you can see my Decepticon leaders a bit different than my Decepticons and I painted one up specifically to be the Autobots leaders now this is going to be the Autobots base and down here is going to be the Decepticon base in the Crystal Cave now the Autobots got to pick first and they chose this spot and they set up their perimeter defenses. And I've got colored stones to make a perimeter defense for each of them. So these are their fortifications that give them a plus one bonus. Well, the Decepticons then, being Decepticons, chose this. And they set up their fortifications differently. They're like, come on in, Autobots. We're waiting. But by doing this, they have forced the Autobots to go off in two different directions. Now with the start of the game, of course, 20 units and the leader unit. We're going to give the leader unit a plus one. So rather than destroying a unit on a 10, it destroys a unit on a 9 or a 10. And I'm also going to in initiate a special rule of leader combat. So, you know, say these two entire formations were fighting each other's, the leaders would have individual combat. So, you know, the, the rank-and-file combat and the leader combat would be rolled separately. Because, once again, Transformers is very leader-oriented. Now, of course, when you lose this leader with a bonus, you know, you're just shit out of luck. You can appoint another leader just to make yourself feel better, but it will not get a bonus because, as we know, when you lose that special leader, it's just never as good. Now, I've created neutral parts to start my Cybertron, and I took my neutral pirates. Now, these were just to hold votive candles, and I have created those into structures. And these various other things, I'm going to think of possibilities on giving bonuses. Now, of course, this big, beautiful pyramid, it's going to give an extra bonus of power. So it's probably going to be like holding one more strategic point for units. And over here I've created a crystal forest. And we may give that. Now you can see I have some gold units over here. 
I have created 20 of those. I have taken my 15 pirate units from Polite Risk and just created individual Cybertronians. And that gives the neutral party 35 on the board. So starting with 20, that means neither side should really go around and start playing Bully Boy. So, you know, I'm a part of this is me testing the game rules using a neutral side, as well as discovering some interesting bonuses, and then in a next game, in a next game, in a next game, I would refine these rules and then bring them as a set. But yes, you know, like right here, I've got an obelisk, and these are mostly semi-precious stones, by the way, and like I say, those knickknacks, and one of the things I found, and a giant cyber cat, and and we're being attacked by a giant satin, and and we're about to have cat versus cat. We're going to have a cat fight. You see, i got another pyramid over here, and and I've created, and matter of fact, that little cat house over there even has a cave in it. So, you know, I've created strategic spots, and I've got my different kind of risk unit, fleet risk units, and with many different colors, and I can create special units. So, you know, as I said, starting this off, you know, I am playing a basic game, and it's going to have my typical fleet risk rules. It's just this is Cybertron. Now, an interesting thing, I'm going to take this board over here, and I'm going to make it into a space bridge. And this space bridge will go over here to another table I'm going to set up, that actually has an earth board on it. So, you know, I'm going to start these guys out here. It's rain today, so I didn't bring out my earth board. I would have it set up. But, you know, I have an old Axis and Allies board. It's a little bit bigger than your other, you know, type boards for these games. So, you know, I have my Axis and Allies board, and that's going to be my earth board. And I have some earth units, you know, set up. So, once again... Going to Earth in this game is going to be a possibility. I thought that would be interesting. And once again, if anyone had just a risk board, you know, they could set up their own giant Cybertron and their own risk board on the side. And, and you know, they can have Transformers, the fleet risk game. So I guess we're going to call this Transformer Risk. And there you see Unicat, and, and just between us, oh my god, I was measuring those out so they would be perfect distance from each other. So, you know, they're all at least, you know, one ruler distance away, so it would be a couple moves away. You know, that way, you know, it's all out and fair, and very Cybertronish. God, Richella was playing with those, and like I say, you got my high point over here, and and I'm going to try to work with some other rules on some transformerish things. You know, uh, how they tend to blend together. So this is a part of it. This is step one for transformer risk. Now, everyone, please put your comments below. And I hope you're enjoying these. And I hope you're gathering up your stuff to create your own boards. Have a good night.